Hi class, we're finishing up our notes today on 5.7. We're doing problems 15 through 20. And in my opinion, these are the most difficult problems of the notes. We're, doing, we're, we're evaluating more radicals like we did in 9 through 14. However, this time it involves variables. So you can't use your calculator to check your work. You have to go through the math principles that we've been going through in this chapter. So here's the first one. And what I should have written on the top of the notes here is that all answers must be in radical form. So I don't want them in rational form. If they're in rational form, change them to radical form. So make sure that you're aware of that 15 through 20, all answers I want in radical form. All right, for number 15. With common bases, x to the 1 fifth and x to the 7 fifths, I add their exponents when I'm multiplying with common bases. So I'm multiplying x and x, so I have to add 1 fifth plus 7 fifths. So it's x raised to the 8 fifths. So now that I've done that, I have to remember all answers have to be in radical form. So this is the same thing as the fifth root of x to the 8th. It's the fifth root of x to the 8th. Now class, once again, like I told you in a previous video, if the exponent is greater than the index, you can reduce. So make sure you remember that rule. My exponent of 8 is bigger than my index of 5. So that means that I can reduce. Now what you want to do is you want to make this 8 a multiple of 5, and the highest multiple of 5. So what we do is we say that this same thing is still the fifth root. However, I'm going to change it to x to the fifth times x cubed. Why do I do that? x to the fifth times x cubed is still x to the eighth, so I haven't changed anything. I am unable to take the fifth root of x cubed. However, I can take the fifth root of x to the fifth. What times itself five times gives x to the fifth? x times x times x times x times x is x to the fifth. So the fifth root of x to the fifth is x. Or like we've said before, another way you can consider this is the fives cancel out. Five divided by five is just one, so it's x raised to the first power. And what is still left? x cubed underneath the radical. And it's the radical of the fifth power. So this reduces to x multiplied by the fifth root of x cubed. And there's our answer for problem number 15. All right, now you guys pause the video. Try number 16 all on your own. Use the um, properties that we've been talking about. Very, very similar to problem number 15. All right, unpausing the video, you guys see that we have common bases, so we have to add these exponents. So 2 thirds adding 6 sevenths. 2 thirds plus 6 sevenths, common denominator of 21. Fourteen twenty ones and eighteen twenty ones. Adding these two up, you get x raised to the thirty two over twenty one. X raised to the thirty two over twenty one. So now all answers have to be in radical form. This is rational, so it's going to be the twenty first root of x raised to the 32nd power. If my index is greater, sorry, if my exponent is greater than my index, I can reduce. So I'm going to make x raised to the 32nd, I'm going to break that up into two different things, one of them being a multiple of 21, which x raised to the 21st is a multiple of 21. And then I still have x raised to the 11th as well. So now, what is the 21st root of x to the 21st? x multiplied by itself 21 times is x to the 21st. So these kind of cancel out, and you just get x raised to the first power. And what's left underneath the radical? x to the, x to the 11th is. 
So we have x times the 21st root of x raised to the 11th. And there is my answer for the next one. Hopefully you got that exact same thing. Number 17. We have a power raised to another power. We're going to use the product property of exponents. Or sorry, we're going to use the power property, which says that you multiply these two when it's a power raised to a power. So negative 2 thirds times a negative 1 sixth. X is then, a negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 1 is 2, and 3 times 6 is 18. So it's X raised to the 2 18ths. Let's reduce that. It's X raised to the 1 ninth. Now that we have that, let's change it into radical form. It is the ninth root of x raised to the first power, or the ninth root of x. This one we cannot reduce. Our exponent is smaller than my index. In order to reduce, my exponent has to be greater than my index. Number 18, x raised to the negative 3 fourths. The first place that we're going to start, this one is very difficult class, so pay very close attention on this one. I want to change this positive. So if that's the case, I've got to bring it to the denominator. So it's 1 over x raised to the positive 3 fourths. So now, class, don't write this down yet, but I want you to see something. If we were to change this into radical form, which, like I said, don't write this down yet, just kind of watch. If we were to change this into radical form, it would be 1 over the fourth root of x cubed. Correct? Now, when we were talking about in Lesson 5.5 and 5.6, that was all about rationalizing the denominator. I cannot have a radical in my denominator. And what do you see right here? It is a radical sign in my denominator. And so it's very, very difficult to get rid of it when it's something besides the square root. The fourth root is a little bit more difficult. I can't just multiply by that exact same thing. It doesn't quite work. Okay? So I can't do any of this stuff in blue just yet. To rationalize this denominator, I'm going to go back to my exponential form. Now, I have to multiply the denominator and the numerator by something that gets my denominator to be rational. So I ask you, what is that? If I multiply it by x raised to some power, I know that I have to add when my common bases are being multiplied by each other. I know I have to add their exponents. So what exponent should I have right here where if I add 3 fourths to a number, I get a rational number? Or let's just say when I add 3 fourths plus what number, do I get 1? 3 fourths plus 1 fourth. Isn't that 4 fourths, which equals 1? Hopefully that makes sense to you. So what I want to do here is I want to multiply the bottom by x raised to the 1 fourth. In doing so, I will get x raised to the first power on the bottom, which is rational. It, whatever I do to the bottom, I must also do to the top. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by x raised to the 1 fourth. So now what do we have? 1 times x raised to the 1 fourth is x raised to the 1 fourth. x to the 3 fourths times x to the 1 fourth. We already talked about this. You would add your exponent with common bases, and you'd get x raised to the first. Now, our denominator is now rational. You have successfully rationalized the denominator. Now, let's put this into radical form. So this, going down here x raised to the 1 fourth is the same thing as the fourth root of x to the first divided by x. There is the answer for problem number 18. Number 19. What I would first start off by doing class is I would say it's a power raised to a power on both of these. So you're going to end up multiplying. x raised to the negative 1 third raised to the 1 sixth, I'm going to multiply 1 third times 1 sixth to get 1 eighteenth. 
and this is a negative one-third, so a negative times a positive is a negative. In the numerator, you would get x raised to the negative 118. In the denominator, x raised to the negative sixth, sorry, we're just going to multiply a negative six times one-sixth to get a negative six-sixths, which is the same thing as a negative one over x raised to the negative one. So now, I have negative exponents on both of these, so I'm going to bring this to the numerator and change the sign. I'm going to bring this to the denominator and change the sign. So this blue is the same thing as x raised to the first over x raised to the positive 118. Now, once again, class, don't write this down. Same situation. If I were to put this in radical form, it would be the 18th root of x. And once again, we can't have ra radicals in the denominator. So what we have to do is we have to rationalize the denominator. So in the same way, how do we get the, numerator, the denominator to be rational? What number do I have to multiply this by once again to get a 1? That would be x raised to the 17 eighteenths. Because the 17 eighteenths plus 1 eighteenth is 18 eighteenths, which is 1. So whatever you do to the bottom, you also have to do to the top. x raised to the 17 eighteenths. So in doing this, you're going to successfully rationalize your denominator. In the numerator, we get x to the first times x to the 17 eighteenths. So when you add 1 plus 17 eighteenths, you get ah, class, I made a mistake. Shoot. I'm, I'm going through more work than we need to do. Okay, You would get the right answer if you did everything that we put in green over here. However, it's very inefficient. So class, forget what I said about that. I apologize for this. Here's what we can do now. We have x raised to the first divided by x raised to the 1 18th. With common bases, we can use the quotient property for exponents. And the quotient property says with common bases, we can subtract their exponents. So we would get 1 minus 1 18th. Remember that rule with common bases? You can subtract whatever the exponents are. So 1 subtract 1 18th. So 1 minus 1 18th is 17 18ths. So we would get x raised to the 17 18ths. And now we could just change this into radical form. So this is a much easier way about going uh, around doing this. So we would have the 18th root of x to the 17th. And there's our answer for problem number 19. The 18th root of x to the 17th. Last one. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. So 16 times 3 fourths ends up being 12. So in the numerator, you get x to the twelfth. Same thing here in the denominator with the power raised to a power you multiply. So 12 multiplied by 3 fourths, you get 9. So in the denominator you get y raised to the ninth. In class, this is as far as we can go. Some people say, Mr. Berge, we want these in, rash in radical form and there are no radicals in this one. When you have an integer as an exponent, you don't have to change it into radical form. That wouldn't make any sense. Only when you have a fraction, like y raised to the 3 fourths. Whenever there's a fraction, or y raised to the 4 thirds, even if, it's in, even if it's improper fraction, these are the ones that you change into radical form. You don't change, you can't change um, integers into radical form. So your answer, x to the 12th over y to the 9th. All right. Like I said, in my opinion, this lesson was difficult. So with your objectives for tomorrow, 63, 64, 65, 66, 
I certainly want you to ask me any questions that you might have, and I can explain them a little bit better, hopefully one-on-one, -on -one, um, using different examples from, the own ones that, from your own ones that you brought up. Hopefully you took some good notes, and maybe you circled or highlighted some things that you didn't quite understand the first time. Class, I want you to ask me those questions because I want to help you best understand this material. So please let me know if there are any questions.